If you set your team mentality as very attacking, what actually happens to your players? Do they shoot a bit more? Do they run around a bit more during the match? Do they tire out a bit faster? I guess we all sort of assume that these things will happen, but has anyone actually proven it? Well, that's what I'm going to do in this video today. G'day guys, Max here from FM Scout. I have joined FM Scout as a guest content creator and um, I will be running the show for the next few videos. Some of you may already uh, know me. Um, I actually have my um, own YouTube channel called uh, Evidence Based Football Manager, um, link provided below. So that's where I am usually active, but um, the FM Scout community has kindly reached out to me and um, they have invited me to do a collaboration project. So here we are. So in the next few videos, I will be going through the team instructions and player instructions in Football Manager one by one uh, in order to find out exactly how they work. For example, if you told your players to uh, play for set pieces, do the number of corners and free kicks for your team actually go up? If you tell your players to focus play uh, down the left, do they actually do it? So these are the things that I'm going to go through uh, in the next few videos. So we're going to start with team mentality. Um, so in Football Manager, there are seven different team mentalities that you can uh, set for your team. Uh, they are very defensive, defensive, cautious, balanced, positive, attacking, and very attacking. Um, I will be uh, mainly focusing on three of these mentalities today. Uh, so very defensive, balanced, and uh, very attacking mentality. So first, let me explain to you how I set up the experiments for today. Um, those of you who are familiar with my videos will know that uh, I am all about reducing the number of variables as much as possible uh, in my experiments. So I'm using the game version uh, 22.4 and um, I've set up a friendly match uh, between two Portuguese teams, uh, Benfica and Santa Clara. Uh, this match is played at a neutral venue, so um, there's no home ground advantage to um, either side on the field. And um, I use the game editor to fill the two teams with uh, identical clone players. Um, these players all have uh, 15 out of 20 for uh, all the attributes, uh, except for the teamwork attribute, uh, which is set as 20 out of 20. The reason I set uh, teamwork as 20 out of 20 is because I want these players to uh, follow the, uh, the tactical instructions as closely as possible. I have added a second manager in the game, so uh, I'm in charge of both teams, uh, Benfica and Santa Clara. So the reason I do that uh, is because uh, being in charge of both teams of the match at the same time, uh, it's the only way to make sure that no tactical change occurs to either side of the match uh, during these experiments. So basically what I've done is to uh, set up an environment where I can get two teams of identical strength to verse each other uh, when the only variable is the tactic that's being used by the two teams. So I get both teams, uh, Benfica and Santa Clara, to use a, a generic 4-4-2 tactic. Uh, this is a tactic that I've set up myself and um, it, it doesn't contain any tactical instructions. So I'm basically trying to make this tactic as, you know, as uh, vanilla and as generic as possible. And um, I set the mentality of both teams, Benfica and Santa Clara, as balanced, um, as you can see on the screen here. Then um, what I do is I proceed to the match. Um, remember, I'm in charge of both teams, Benfica and Santa Clara. So I know that uh, during these matches, both teams will stay as balanced mentality uh, uh, throughout the entire match. And when the match ends, um, I go into the match report and um, I record some statistics from the match uh, for the two teams. So um, uh, that's the number of shots, uh, shots on target, XG, uh, pass accuracy and uh, ball possession. I also recorded uh, the conditions of the players at the end of every, every match. And then what I do is um, I reload the save uh, so that I can go back to the start of the match and um, I start repeating the exact same match uh, 10 times um, in order to build up a sample pool. After that, what I do is um, I change the team mentality of the Benfica team to very defensive. I don't change anything else. Uh, you know, I don't change the uh, anything for the Santa Clara team. Uh, it's just a mentality that I change from balanced to very defensive for, uh, for the Benfica side. Then I repeat the same match uh, 10 times, just like before. And um, once that's done, um, I change the mentality of Benfica to very attacking. And um, again, I repeat the same match uh, 10 times. So uh, that means that um, the total sample size is uh, 30 matches. 
so that's 10 matches with balanced mentality, 10 matches with uh, very defensive mentality, and uh, 10 matches with a very attacking mentality. Okay, let's have a look at the results together. So I have recorded all these data uh, into an Excel spreadsheet and um, I've turned uh, everything into bar graphs, uh, you know, just to make it a bit easier for us to uh, comprehend the results. So first of all, um, let's have a look at the number of shots, uh, shots on target and XG for the Benfica team. So uh, when the team mentality was set as very defensive, uh, these players recorded 14.1 uh, uh, shots on average per match. Remember, the sample size is uh, 10 matches. So um, this 14.1 shots uh, per match is, is an average value uh, from those 10 matches. And um, when the mentality was set as balanced, uh, these players recorded 16 shots per match on average. And when uh, the players were on uh, very attacking mentality, uh, they recorded 20.6 shots per match. I guess uh, this is an expected result. So when the team is being very attacking, the players will shoot more uh, compared to when the team is being uh, very defensive. So it's the same trend with the number of shots on target and XG as well. Uh, so uh, these stats are the highest when the team is on uh, very attacking mentality and uh, they're the lowest when the team is on very defensive mentality. Next, let's have a look at uh, pass accuracy and ball possession. So with pass accuracy, there is a slight negative trend here. Uh, so when the team is on very defensive mentality, uh, pass accuracy was 84.3% on average. And um, when the team is on very attacking mentality, pass accuracy did fall down to 80%. It's not a big difference between these three mentalities, but it does make sense because when the team is on very attacking mentality, the players will tend to go for the uh, the riskier, more forward passes, uh, which explains why pass accuracy is slightly lower when the team is on uh, very attacking mentality, uh, you know, compared to balanced or uh, very defensive mentality. And if you have a look at our ball possession, um, I don't think I notice any trend between the uh, between the the different mentalities here. So when the team is on very defensive mentality, ball possession is 51.9%. Uh, uh, and when the team is on very attacking mentality, ball possession is 49.2%. Uh, yeah, there is a slight drop here, uh, but you know, I don't think it's anything uh, that's statistically significant. Okay, let's have a look at the team stats for Santa Clara, which is the opposition team in the test. Remember, I didn't change the mentality for Santa Clara in these tests. It was just the mentality for Benfica that, that I varied. So with the number of shots, shots on target and XG, um, I can see there is a slight positive trend uh, in these three statistics. So these values for Santa Clara are the highest uh, when the Benfica team was on very attacking mentality. And um, these stats are the lowest when the Benfica team was on very defensive mentality. So this could be due to the fact that um, because the Benfica players are being very offensive minded and, um, you know, if they're taking more risks with, with their passes, um, they're, actually, they're actually going to give away more goal scoring, uh, goal scoring opportunities to the opposition team, which translates to a higher number of shots, uh, shots on target and XG uh, for Santa Clara, um, as you can see from uh, these bars. Next, let me show you how much these players tire out during a match, uh, depending on the different mentalities. So during my experiments, um, at the end of every match, uh, I recorded the fitness levels of the players, and um, I counted the number of players whose fitness levels are dark green, light green, yellow, or red. So dark green means that the player didn't fatigue at all, and red color means that the player became uh, very, very fatigued. So you can see from this graph here, that um, when the team is on very defensive mentality, only 1% of the players became very fatigued by the end of the match. Uh, whereas when the team is uh, on very attacking mentality, 30% of the players became very fatigued. So it's a huge increase in the number of players who become very tired uh, when you change the mentality from very defensive to very attacking. I guess this makes sense because um, under a defensive mentality, the players won't run around the field as much which prevents them from getting tired. But with an attacking mentality, the players will exert themselves a bit more on the field, which will of course make them more tired. So I guess an advice I can give you at this stage is that um, when your team is going through a congested schedule, 
or if you don't have a large enough squad to cope with a, a demanding season when you're uh, when you're going for like multiple trophies in a season, do try to avoid being on a very a very attacking mentality because your players will become very tired uh, very quickly. So this basically means that an attacking mentality can be a double-edged sword in in a football manager tactic, because when you're on a very attacking mentality. Your players will make more shots, uh, which will translate into more goals for your team. But at the same time, you will give away more attacking opportunities to the opposition team. And also your players will become uh, more tired uh, a bit faster. What is interesting, however, uh, is the fact that when you change your uh, mentality from balance to very attacking, the proportion of shots, shots on target and XG uh, that go up for your own team is a bit more than, uh, than for the opposition team. For example, with Benfica, um, the number of shots went up from 16 to 20.6, 20, uh, 20 as you can see here. But for the opposition team, the number of shots went up from 14.1 to 15.3. So uh, in terms of the proportion of change, the very attacking mentality seems to benefit your own team a bit more than it does for uh, to the opposition team. Now, does that mean that you should favor attacking mentalities over defensive mentalities in your football major tactics? Let's find out. So to answer this question, I set up a new experiment. I used the custom testing league uh, created by the FM Scout team. Uh, so this is a league where all the variables are controlled as much as possible. So here, um, there are 48 matches in one season and um, there are three separate leagues that are simulated at the same time. So it's basically 144 matches in one season. And what I did was um, I ran the simulation nine times. So that's three simulations when the team was on very defensive mentality, three simulations uh, on balance mentality, and uh, three simulations on very attacking mentality. And um, at the end of every season, uh, I went into the, uh, the end of season statistics page uh, that you can see right here. And um, I recorded the number of goals and shots for my team. And uh, I also recorded uh, the number of wins, draws, and losses. So let's have a look at the results together. Um, again, I've recorded all these data into an Excel spreadsheet. So um, first of all, the number of shots. So when the team was on very defensive mentality, um, the team recorded 6.4 shots on average per match. So when the team was on balance mentality, uh, uh, the players recorded 9.2 shots per match. And uh, when the team was on a very attacking mentality, uh, they recorded 11.8 shots per match. And um, if you have a look at the number of goals, uh, it's a similar trend here. So when the team was on very attacking mentality, uh, the players recorded 1.6 goals on average per match, uh, which is the highest out of the, uh, the three different mentalities. And now let's have a look at the number of wins, draws, and losses. So when the team was on very defensive mentality, uh, they won uh, 102 times out of uh, a total of 432 matches. And uh, when the team was on balance mentality, they won 113 times. And when they were on very attacking mentality, they won uh, 141 times. And if you have a look at the number of losses, uh, when the team was on very defensive mentality, they lost uh, 256 times out of 432 matches. And when they were on very attacking mentality, they lost uh, 235 times. So there is a clear trend here. When the team is on very defensive mentality, uh, the team will record the least number of shots, the least number of goals, and the least number of wins. On the other hand, when the team is on very attacking mentality, uh, the players will record the, the most number of shots, the most number of goals, and the most number of wins. So I guess uh, these results that you see here, they do support the hypothesis that I suggested before, uh, which is that when your team is on very attacking mentality, the benefit that comes from uh, all those additional shots that your players make, they will outweigh the cost that comes from uh, conceding more chances to the opposition team. And that will translate into more wins for your team in the long run. Of course, if you're playing a match where your sole aim is to concede the least number of goals, then you should go with either a defensive or a very defensive mentality. And also, as I showed you before, um, the attacking mentalities will cause your players to fatigue a bit faster. 
So you shouldn't ask your players to be on uh, very attacking mentalities all the time, uh, especially if your team is going through a congested schedule, uh, you know, in the middle of a season. But if your aim is to create a custom football manager tactic that maximizes your chance of your team winning, then I do suggest uh, going with either attacking or very attacking mentality. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. Do you agree with what I talked about today? What do you think about team mentality in Football Manager? Comment below to let me know. In my next video, I will be going through more tactical instructions in Football Manager uh, to find out uh, exactly how they affect the behaviors of your players on the field. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, uh, do check out my personal YouTube channel, uh, Evidence Based Football Manager. Uh, you can find more uh, Football Manager related videos there based on controlled tests and experiments like the ones uh, that I showed you today. All right, guys, take care and I'll see you guys next time.